It has become a holiday in the state of Alabama over the years. It is National Signing Day 2023 edition from the University of Alabama. Our broadcast brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Another banner day for Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide. They once again put together the top rated class in the nation. Welcome everybody. I'm Chris Stewart, a guy that was part of that fantastic class in 2014. Where's the time gone? Christian Miller, part of our broadcast crew on the Crimson Tide Sports Network as well. First of all, when you think about National Signing Day, I'm going to guess that there are some flashbacks for you to what was a very special time in your life. A lot of a lot of flashbacks. It was a very special day. I got to you know celebrate the accomplishment of earning a scholarship to a prestigious program like here, and uh, man, it, it panned out to be a great decision. And uh, I'm so excited I chose to come here, and I'm so excited for the guys today that made that decision. Recruiting has changed dramatically. Signing day has changed dramatically and, and what all is entailed with that. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. But it seems that for the most part, the young men that are choosing the University of Alabama are choosing it for many of the very same reasons that you did back then. That's right. You know, I actually have my national championship ring on right here. I noticed that. <laughs> Blinded by it. It's beautiful. That's right. But I've got to ask, you know, which one? Right. Is it it's Alabama? This was the first one okay. uh, back in 2015. And nice. it was one of those things. That was one of the reasons I wanted to come here. I wanted to play for Coach Saban. I wanted to compete for national championships. I wanted a chance uh, to play in the NFL, and I was able to accomplish all those goals. Also being named a team captain, which meant so much to me. So a lot of great things here at the University of Alabama. A lot of fantastic things that you've seen during your time, including the the facilities and the upgrades and all the changes. One of those, the iconic Alabama locker room and that tunnel that's between the locker room and the Walk of Champions is where we welcome in the third member of our crew today, Kenzie Hughes. Welcome, and boy, there's a lot of big-time names on that board. A lot of big-time names, and how do you guys like the scenery, right? Very nice. Right? Very nice. Well, let's talk about the decor for a minute. 27 names on this big board right here. We got 14 defensive guys. We got 12 offensive dogs, and we got a place kicker. Can't forget about can't forget about my man Connor. But some great names, probably looking to add to that championship culture, like you mentioned, Christian. That is uh, indeed the case, and I think they turned down uh, Thunderstruck there in the tunnel so that <laughs> we could hear her instead, somewhat iconic, as well as the tunnel itself. So signing day is a special day, but it's also the the end, for a moment anyway, mm -hmm. of a lot of work done by a lot of coaches and a lot of staff that people never see. That's right. There's so much that goes into this, Chris. You know, these coaches are on the road. They're out recruiting. They're making those phone calls. They're having in-home visits. So much that goes into it. So it's almost like a, a breath of fresh air once you get this done. But it's, again, such a, a special day and a huge accomplishment. These recruits have put in so much time and effort, and they're chasing their dreams, and they finally are one step closer. They put their name on that line. They found their new homes, and uh, I'm just so excited for all the things that they have in store for them. Well, coming up in just a few minutes here on National Signing Day 2023, we're going to hear from Alabama head coach Nick Saban, his press conference that will lay out everything that uh, is relative to this class and taking questions, and we'll be hearing all of that for you here on National Signing Day 2023. But we're going to get things started by checking out some of the members of that class and one of the earliest young men to put his name uh, out there as a verbal commit and then also one of the first ones to sign I'm going to go out on a limb. He'll be the greatest player ever from Finland to wear an Alabama uniform. That's Olas right. Allen. That's right, Chris. He, you know, big, strong, physical guy. Um, I think he projects as both, you know, a tackle and a guard um, with his style of play and uh, he has exceptional length, nice frame and uh, again, he has that, that bully mentality and that's what you want to see from an offensive lineman. Really cool that he's coming all the way from Finland, so I'm really excited about this guy. Yeah, 6'6", 315, even though that camera shot is a little bit far away, it's not difficult to find number 73 on the uh, screen and, and the guy that's basically playing the role of bulldozer there uh, is the young man that will be wearing an Alabama uniform next season. Really impressive stuff right there. I, I like that even with his height, he, he does a really good job of bending at the waist. You know, a lot of guys have a hard time staying low when they're that tall, but he does a really nice job of playing low. He has really good ankle and hip flexibility, so that's, that's really positive stuff to see. Again, played his prep ball at the Loomis Chaffee School in Connecticut, a unanimous four-star prospect and ranked as high as uh, 132 on the ESPN 300 list and the number 14 offensive tackle prospect 
by that outlet as well. Keon Keeley is another young man that we're uh, taking a look at. Part of that signing class for the Crimson Tide as well. Tell us what you know about Keon. Elite size and measurables. Uh, he projects as that jack linebacker in our system. Um, particularly, we saw Will Anderson play that position in the past couple of seasons. A long, lengthy athlete who's very disruptive. Um, I actually have gotten to know him uh, personally, and he's a great kid off the field, has a really good head on his shoulders, and uh, you see him right there just throwing the quarterback down, really aggressive. Um, but you just look at this guy. He has everything that you want out of edge rusher. Really nice spin move right there. Has an arsenal of pass rush moves. I'm so excited about this guy. Um, and again, you know, getting to know him, um, I can't say enough about his character. And so it's a total package right here, a huge pickup for Alabama, and he's going to uh, play a huge role coming off the edge uh, for the Crimson Tide. 6'6", 242 out at Tampa, yeah. played at Berkeley Pro. That's a little guy compared to you, right? <laughs> uh, rated the nation's top pass rusher by really every recruiting site. Five-star, according to 24-7, rivals on three and prep star and holding that same ranking on the 24-7 composite and on three consensus list. There are a lot of these that, you know, it, it it depends on who you're talking to as to where they rank. It doesn't matter who you talk to. Keon Keeley is one of those that uh, is at the top. You're absolutely right. And, and again, he just offers everything you'd like out of, a, out of a pass rusher and an edge player. He can play the run. He's got the measurables to work with. And you can't coach that. You can't coach 6'6", 245 pounds in that athleticism. So really big pickup for Alabama. The size is not a guarantee of what a player will be but also know that it doesn't matter how much you coach up a kid. If he's 5'9", 220, <laughs> he's not going to be that. I mean, right. It's, it's obviously a great starting point, the physical aspect, but there's certainly a lot more to it that Coach Saban and the staff see. That's exactly right. And, and, and just to mention his character again, you know, I, I actually got to meet him in, uh, in one of his visits, and I spoke to him on the phone as well. And believe it or not, he, he told me he actually liked watching me and Terrell Lewis, another former edge player here at Alabama. And uh, that was really special to me. And uh, I look forward to working with him because, again, he's a very mature kid. He's got his head on uh, straight, and he really wants to be a good player here. And he's excited for this opportunity. It was great, but it also probably stung a little bit when he called you sir, didn't it? <laughs> right. You know, I still feel Just, pretty young, Chris. Uh, but... <laughs> you should. That's because you are. That's right. <laughs> uh, but I understand completely. Ty Lockwood is next on our list. He's out of Thompson's Station, Tennessee. Played at Independence High School, 6'5", 225. A really nice tight end pickup for the Crimson Tide. You know, Chris, he's a really talented receiving type of tight end is what I got from him on film. You know, he's going to be a weapon in the passing game. Uh, he's going to be a big target at 6'5". Uh, he's got a really nice long frame. I think he's going to benefit from the weight room. Similar to me, you know, I was a little uh, slender when I first got here, but I really benefited from the strength and conditioning program once I got here. Uh, but if you watch him, you know, he's, he's gritty. You know, he's a willing blocker, and he's going to play with a lot of great effort. Um, but great athleticism right there to make him catch. And, and seeing him split wide yeah. there, I mean, is an indicator. And that's something that the tight ends are asked to do for Alabama. You're asked to split wide on occasion, but you're also a guy who better be able to block in the run game if you're going to play that position. That's exactly right, Chris. And, and you know, like I said, we see, we see the nice catches, but um, you, you're going to be asked to block here. That's one of the things that they ask our tight ends to, uh, to do. you got to be physical in the run game. And, and just seeing his determination, um, out there, I, I think he'll have no problem with that. He'll definitely benefit from putting some extra weight on though as well. He had originally committed to Ohio State, but chooses the tide over the Buckeyes, LSU, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt, which obviously speaks to what he is academically as well. Jalen Hale is next on our list. Tell us about this young man. Tell us what you know about Jalen. Jalen is a really good athlete. You know, I like what I saw out of him when I was watching him. Uh, he also was a basketball player and a, tight, uh, excuse me, a track athlete as well. Um, he plays above his size. He's listed at 6'1", 185, but um, he has really good body control. Uh, you'll see him go high point the football and make a lot of contested catches. Um, just, just overall, again, a very sound athlete, you know, given his background in multiple sports, making guys miss right there. You see the breakaway speed, taking it all the way to the house for a touchdown. Um, really good run after the catch ability as well, picking up those those extra yards so I think he has a lot of potential you know to be a big time threat in the passing game and 
even like he's displaying right now, a big vertical threat um, that would be useful to uh, whoever's going to be the quarterback next season. Well, and you get a player out of Texas, played at Longview High School for Coach John King, picked Alabama over Texas, Texas A&M, Georgia, Southern Cal. I mean, obviously that's an indicator. This guy can go anywhere, and Alabama fortunate to have him, but clearly he is feels fortunate that he's getting a chance to play at the University of Alabama as well. You know, you look at the guys in the NFL right now that played wide receiver here, and it's hard to turn that down. You know, you see guys like Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith, those guys having such huge, huge success in the National Football League, so hard to pass that opportunity up. See, on the recruiting visit, they get a chance to wear the, the bling that has been <laughs> earned by other individuals, <laughs> such as Christian Miller. That, that ring looked pretty familiar. I, was, I think that was 2015 in the mix yes, sir. that he had on there as well. Hopeful that he'll have a chance to earn one of his own. Still to come, we're going to hear from head coach Nick Saban. That's just a few moments away. And also, we'll come down to the tunnel next and see uh, what's happening with social media for these young men. Kinsey, what are you seeing on the uh, social media platforms based on the signing of these young men? Well, you know, it is 2022, so we live in the era of social media. So looking at some of the buzz, Alaus Allenin is committed to the University of Alabama with a pretty cool graphic from his personal Twitter. Excited to see him here back home, baby, talking about the trophies, right, guys? Like you said, Christian, you come here to win championships, and he is not shy about sharing it. Moving to Keon Kelly, the five-star. He is committed, and we are excited to have him on this signing day. You see him? He's got the chain on. And then Ty Lockwood giving a simple roll tie, right? We love some Southern charm with it from this beautiful state of Tennessee. We like to see it, Ty. And then Jalen Hale getting cozy with Coach Saban on the couch for his home visit. We're super excited to have these guys and uh, – you know, you love to see the Bama Factor chain on. That is indeed the case. Thank you so much, Kinsey. We'll be checking back with you very shortly. But when we return here on National Signing Day 2023 in Tuscaloosa, we will hear from head coach Nick Saban. Stay with us. We are back right after this. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to a sold-out Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa. Players play. Tough players win championships. If we're blue-collar basketball, we're winning this game. Okay, if you play harder than them, you win the game. Roll, Tom, roll is exactly doing that. It's hard to hear yourself in here. There's a formula for success. It takes practice, persistence, and an unwavering drive. Together, our aspirations become reality. Every triumph has its origin story. Ours begin right here. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Signing day 2023 at the University of Alabama. Very successful once again. Our coverage brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. I'm Chris Stewart alongside Christian Miller. Kinsey Hughes joining us from the big board again in just a few moments. Right behind us, the names of the 27 young men that make up not only the 2023 class for Alabama, but Christian, the top-ranked class 
in the nation once again. That's right, Chris. A lot of star power, a lot of big beef among the offensive line. We see a lot of athleticism with these guys behind us. A lot to be excited about. No question about that. Nick Saban will be sharing his thoughts coming up in just a matter of moments to discuss that. When you're evaluating, as somebody who's been through this process before, when you're, you're looking at it, I know the, the stars and all of that, the rating system coming in, is important, but it's the eye test, isn't it, for people that do what you've done and what Coach and his staff do on a daily basis in terms of evaluation. Yeah, that's right, and, and that's why it's so critical to have so many people on staff to, to grade the film, to see these guys in person. You know, they do a really good job of getting these guys on campus, bringing them to camp, seeing how they move in person, seeing what they're capable of. Can we try, can we try to put this guy at this position? Can he play this position? So important to, to really to get the most out of these guys. And, again, you know, you really want to dive into these guys. Even off the field, you got you got to get the right character guys. you got to have the right guys with the right mentality. So, so much goes into these recruiting classes. Also, the adjustment that's required to go from being uh, loved on mm -hmm. and pursued as these young people are to now, okay, it's time to go to work and actually become who everybody's been telling you that you can be. Not who you are, mm -hmm. but who you can be when you put on that Alabama uniform. Yeah, and, and once you get here, you know, you're, you're starting over. You're starting right. fresh. You're amongst a lot of guys that have been in the program. They've been in the strength program. They're going to be bigger and stronger, but that's why it's important that you come in here ready to work. You put your head down and just excited about that opportunity and know that it's going to be a long road ahead, but it's definitely worth it at the end. If you are on scholarship, uh, especially signed on scholarship as a kicker anywhere, but especially at the University of Alabama, it means you're pretty special, and that is the case <laughs> for a young man that has been uh, picked up by the Alabama Crimson Tides. We'll hear from Coach Saban in just a matter of moments, but uh, again, with one of the best kickers in America and Will Reichard uh, potentially being done for his playing days, Alabama excited to be able to replace him, potentially with a young man like Connor Talty. Yeah, and he'll, he'll fill the role. Uh, and a need with you know, Will Reichard most likely leaving for the NFL. Uh, he was 17 of 21, which is 81 percent, the long of 51 in the senior season, 36 of 36 on his PATs. Um, he also has some experience punting the ball, so he could provide some depth as a punter. But uh, definitely a position of need, so a huge pickup for the Crimson Tide in uh, grabbing Connor Talty out of Chicago, Illinois. Play in the 2022, or selected to play in the 2022. Polynesian Bowl and uh, five-star place kicker according to Cole's kicking, but the uh, on three and on three consensus have him as a three-star, which again is not necessarily um, something that should be a concern if you're talking about a guy that can get it done. Kickers ordinarily don't have as high a star rating, so to speak, as other position players do. Sure, yeah, and it's really about what he does when he gets here. You know, if he has the, the kicking strength and he has the accuracy, you know, he'll have a good coach to help develop him here. And uh, I'm excited about uh, his opportunity uh, suiting up for the Crimson Tide. People also very excited about Dylan Lonergan. He's 6'2", 215. He's out of Brookwood High School in Snellville, Georgia. He is a multi-sport athlete, great in baseball as well as football, but expected to challenge for the quarterback position at the University of Alabama. Yeah, Chris, you know, this guy has a big arm, and he's also a very accurate passer. Um, what really stood out to me when you watch his tape, though, nice throw right here down the field, uh, he really demonstrates some really nice poise and confidence in the pocket. You know, he scans the field, he keeps his eyes downfield, looking for his targets. And uh, he's also a tough player. You know, if you see him on tape, he'll sit in that pocket. He'll, he's not afraid to take a hit uh, to make the throws necessary. So you like seeing that uh, competitive toughness out of your quarterbacks. And uh, I think he uh, definitely has a bright future here as well. You see him scrambling right here, some really good athleticism, running all the way down the field for a long touchdown. Had the choice of numerous schools, but ultimately it was down to three, either Alabama, South Carolina, or Stanford. And once again, he chose University of Alabama as to where he will play his college football and Tide fans are and certainly should be excited about that young man, Dylan Lonergan, who will uh, be among a list of quarterbacks, at least right now, that 
has everybody excited. Look, sad to lose in all likelihood a young man after the Sugar Bowl game and Bryce Young, but there are a lot of talented players that'll be ready to compete once that spot opens up. Yeah, that's right, Chris. There's there's a number of guys coming here. You have you know, several quarterbacks, and again, we saw what he was capable to do uh, of doing on film. So I'm really excited about uh, guys like Dylan Longergan, and uh, we'll we'll get to the other quarterback as well coming up here shortly. But again, so so much talent in this class, and not only talent. You just see these guys; they're just they're filled with such confidence and poise, and and they just have they look like they have the right mentality when you watch them on film. You know, and that's what sticks out to me. I, I'm I'm a big proponent of having the right mentality. Because um, I know how important and critical it is when you're a member of the Crimson Tide. So I'm really excited about these guys. I would imagine that's philosophy you had yourself. Also from your father who played the National Football League. But the guy that's going to step to the podium shortly certainly instilled a lot of that as well. He did, you know, and he preaches it day in and day out. And, uh, and, and that's, that's our identity. It's, it's, it's about unparalleled discipline. And uh, you just got to make the most of it and go in each and every day and work hard. Christian, we're going to go to the Malmore building right now and hear from your head coach and the Tides, Nick Say. Good. So, you know, first I'd just like to comment on uh, what a good job I think our players have done uh, with practice so far. Um, you know, we go going seven days in a row after tomorrow. Uh, then players will get three days off for Christmas. But the attitude has been good. The intensity has been good. Obviously, this has been a real opportunity for some of the young guys to get a lot of reps um, with some of the defections that we've had. And um, I think it's really, really good. Uh, I, I like, you know, the attitude of the team. And, you know, I'm encouraged by, you know, what we've been able to accomplish and what we've been able to do. You know, obviously, you know, today was signing day. And we're obviously very pleased with the class we were able to attract. Um, got a good, you know, bunch of players. But I think what I like about this group the most is seems like they have really good character. Um, we still sort of, you know, try to get guys to buy into developing, creating value for their future based on, you know, getting an education, being a good person, uh, being the best football player they could be. Uh, so, you know, I feel like, you know, the kind of guys that we were able to attract are, you know, the, the right kind of guys. And, um, you know, we're excited about the class. I think the, the, the coaching staff did a fantastic job. Uh, this is a long-term process. Uh, guys really worked hard at this, um, not only in the evaluation process, but also in the recruiting process. And, you know, the university community uh, really helps us in a lot of ways, helps us have very positive official visits uh, from Dr. Bell to Greg Byrne to the university community. Uh, the professors who help us in recruiting to, you know, our entire recruiting staff and everybody involved in our organization. So relationships are really important uh, to have a lot of good people in the organization that are, you know, going to be in position to help guys, you know, sort of develop a responsibility for their own self-determination by being accountable personally, academically and athletically and having the right kind of folks to do that, I think, is something that really helps us in, in um you know, recruiting. So, you know, I'd like to also reiterate that uh, I think this is the last time I'll get to talk to you before, you know, the Christmas holidays. I wish everybody a happy holiday out there. I'd also like to encourage, you know, folks to, you know, support our team in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, this team has worked hard. I know we lost a couple of games by, on the last play of the game, but uh, I think these guys have worked hard all year. and. Uh, positive energy is always important to, you know, continuing to have a successful program. So we'd appreciate your support when it comes to, you know, our team being in New Orleans. Uh, on the signing class, did, did you find that NIL had about the same impact on this recruiting cycle as it did the last recruiting cycle, or is NIL just something that ever evolves and is always changing its stripes? Um, you know, we're not allowed to be involved in NLI, at least from my perspective. And, um, you know, I do think that uh, it did have an impact on recruiting uh, with some players. And I, I don't know how you make comments about things that really is kind of a crazy, you know, a little bit of a crazy situation right now, and there's not a really a sensible response to it. So I don't know how to really respond to it other than the fact that, 
you know, we do a great job of trying to sell what, what we can do to create value for players and what they can create for themselves here because our players have done a, a really good job of creating value for themselves and name, image, and likeness by what they do after they get here. Go to Aaron. With, with some of the changes we've seen in college football, particularly the COVID rules that you've had to deal with the last few years, what was it like being in homes as much as you liked, and how, how did that, if, if at all, in, impact the evaluation process? Well, I think really what it helps is it really helps relationships. You know, you get to know the parents better, you get to know the families better, you get to know people better. Um, one of the things that always strikes me, and this is one thing that you couldn't do during COVID, so I guess one day that class will come up, but. Every time I take pictures with the guys that graduate, when they walk up to me and I shake hands with them and congratulate them, the first thing that comes to my mind is their home visit. You know, when I was in their home, whether we had fried chicken I, or wh whatever the situation was, I, that's the first thing I remember. And, uh, and that's because you develop relationships with the family and the parents, uh, you're in their home, uh, their hospitality is really, really appreciated. Uh, we've got some great parents, and obviously we want to have great relationships with them. So um, I think it has a huge impact for me in terms of getting to know them, and I think it has uh, a, a good impact on them in terms of they get to evaluate and get to know us a little better. Stay on that side with Michael. You, you two quarterbacks in this class, can you tell, you, tell us what uh, each one of them brings to the program? Well, we're obviously happy with both guys. Uh, they've both been in successful programs. Uh, we know a lot about them. Uh, they're great people. I think they have really good potential. Uh, I think with this day and age, you, you really, you know, want to make sure when, you know, basically guys can leave your team whenever they want that you have enough guys at each position and um, that they're, they're, they want to be the kind of guys that want to develop you know, at that position. So, uh, and I think both of these guys are very much committed to that. So, I mean, I don't, other than that, they're the kind of guys that we want, and I think they fit the profile of what we need at the position. Back on the right, Charlie. Uh, and a guy like Caleb Downs, he, I know there's a lot to like about his game, but what stands out the most to you about him as a player? Well, first of all, you know, he's a great person, a uh, really smart football player. Uh, football means a lot to him. And um, the guy's a great competitor, loves to compete. Their team won the state championship. He was all into that, you know, could have gone anywhere he wanted to go and wanted to stay with the team that he played with the whole time. And uh, they won the state championship in Georgia, which is, you know, a significant accomplishment. And I just think he's the right kind of person. He's got leadership qualities that, you know, are hard to come by. And the guy's really got a lot of talent physically to be able to develop into something special and we're really looking forward to working with them. Back on the left, Mike Rodak. Charles Kelly was involved with a lot of the players in this class. Just what did you see from him during his time here and overall what have you seen from this staff this time of year when they're being pulled in different directions between recruiting and the bowl game and, and maybe jobs elsewhere? Well I, I think our entire staff did a you know really, really good job. I really appreciate Dion uh, and Charles Kelly both uh, in terms of you know, trying to finish the right way. I went through that experience when I left the Cleveland Browns to go to Michigan State as a head coach, and we had four or five, six games left. And I felt I owed it to the players, uh, to Coach Belichick and the Cleveland Browns organization to do the best job I could and stay focused on that. And, you know, Charles has done a really good job of that. But uh, I, I was really encouraged by the energy, the enthusiasm, the relationships that the entire staff was able to um, sort of develop with this recruiting class. And I think that's important in the future because I think having good relationships is one of the things that uh, will be critical in terms of how you manage your roster in the future. And I think when you have good relationships, when guys come in, that's something you can build on. In the middle here with Mason. I know it takes a lot to build a, um, a league program year in and year out. Where does the recruiting process from, you know, first scouting a player to when they eventually commit, what do you enjoy most about that process? Um, I, I probably, I mean, I like it all. Um, I watch every player that we, we recruit. I make a, a, an evaluation. Uh, we come to an evaluation and agreement as a staff. Um, and then 
I love the relationship building process. I love when guys visit here and you get to visit with them and develop relationships with them, see what's important to them in recruiting, and also the recruiting process when you go out on the road, meet their high school coaches and their families, and when their families come here and visit. So um, there's nothing about the recruiting process that I don't really enjoy. I enjoy it all. Back on the left. You talked about Caleb and, and what he brings character-wise and as a, as a player, but the, the other defensive backs you brought in in this class, did you feel like you met needs there? Well, yeah, I, I think so. Um, we, we, there's four DBs there. You know, a couple guys I think will try at corner. Uh, I think all the guys are capable of playing safety or star. I think corner is one of the most difficult positions to find, uh, and that's still something that we're we're going to continue to look for. Come back over here with Charlie. Any more follow-ups? In the last 10 days or so, you guys were able to add some elite guys up front with Keeley and, and now today with Smith and Russo. Just what do you like about those guys and the defensive front as a whole? Where do you think you kind of added it with that group? Well, I think one of the things that was a real focus for us is to improve uh, up front and – I think we recruited some guys that can cer certainly help us do that. You know, I don't like to single out players, create expectations for them or anything like that. I think the media does a really good job of that. That's something that, you know, we really try to get the guys not to so sort of focus on the expectations, but actually focus on what they have to do to, you know, create value for their future and develop as players. And that's what we're going to focus on with these guys. But I do think those guys um, that we were able to recruit, and you mentioned a few of them there, are certainly going to be guys that can help us in the front seven in the very near future. Okay, unless we have another follow-up, we'll finish up with Mason. Of course, some of the 23 classes are already helping with early enrollees and such. But when players come to campus for the first time, what are some of the things you want to instill in them program-wise first, where it's on the football field or off the football field? Well, I, I think the most important thing, you know, here with these guys at this time, because there is no school, you know, the thing that we want to focus on in January is, hey, how, how can we help you transition as a person? How can we help you transition academically? And how we, can we tr help you transition and develop as a football player? Well, right now, we're just having both practice. And these guys are all here. We have 10 guys that are here practicing with us. And I think the one thing that we're trying to get them to understand is what can they learn systematically? But number two, just get the feeling of what it's like and how to go through practice and what we do in practice. So because there is no school, uh, there aren't very many people here. They'll develop some relationships with players on the team, which I think is a good thing. But I think this whole experience is, is really good for them in terms of what their expectation will, really will be in January when school starts. I think that's probably the greatest benefit to it. And the relationships and the comfort zone that they can create by being around you know, our team and our players. All right, Coach, that's all we got. Thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate you. Coach Nick Saban talking to the media and you as well on National Signing Day 2023. Christian Miller, your initial reaction to what we heard from Coach? You know, I really liked how he, he mentioned, you know, the high character of these guys, and that's what I was referring to because um, he knows they're going to recruit talented players, but it's so imperative to get guys in the program that have the right mindset, that are coachable, that can be developed uh, into the guys that you need them to be on the football field as well as off the field. Um, he also spoke on how critical and crucial it is to have relationships nowadays with players. In, in the new landscape of call, college football, you have to. And uh, I really like that he, he spoke on that. But ultimately, uh, he said, it, you know, I think they, they went and filled a lot of key uh, areas that they needed to fill. And, and uh, I think they've improved in a lot of uh, positions uh, amongst the team. First time he could speak publicly about these young men that are the recruiting class of 2023. But at the same time, you could hear, you know, he stated, frankly, hesitation somewhat in saying too much because he doesn't want to put too much pressure. I mean, there's a lot of hype about this class, mm -hmm. which means there's going to be hype on the individuals. But you can already see him kind of keeping everybody at bay. Hey, give it time. There's a lot of work to do for them to become whoever it is they're going to become.
Yeah, and I think a lot of that comes to, you know, we saw earlier in the season there was some talk on expectations around the big games, um, you know, referencing the Tennessee game. There's a lot of talk about that. And I think one thing he's learned is he doesn't like putting those external factors on players and giving them too much um, expectations to, to really have on their shoulders. He wants them to develop into the players that they can be without that pressure um, amongst them. So I like, I like what I heard from Coach Saban. That was a really good press conference. Let's uh, go back and let you learn a little bit more about the young men that did indeed sign the 27 that made up the top rated class in the nation today. Caleb Downs, a defensive back out of uh, Hodgson, Georgia, played at Mill Creek High School, one of the top players in this 2023 class, regardless of position. Chris, this guy is talented, and uh, we heard Coach Saban speak a little bit about him. Um, this guy kind of has it all, um, you know, from head to toe. You know, he spoke about his leadership qualities. You see him getting a nice interception right there, taking it all the way back to the house for a touchdown, but a tremendous combination of athleticism and physicality. You know, this guy has elite instincts, um, great uh, positional awareness, um, always attacking the football. Um, he provides, you know, excellent versatility in the secondary, can probably play um, all of the sec uh, safety positions. Um, and again, you know, he, I'm pretty sure Coach Saban mentioned, you know, this guy's a winner. Um, he, he provides all the qualities you're looking for, and uh, there's a lot to be excited about uh, Caleb Downs. So you're a guy that Alabama was able to get out of South Carolina. And, and it's always important when you've got a talent-rich state such as Alabama to lock down as best you can what's within your state. Georgia falls into that category as well. And certainly the Bulldogs have had a lot of success recently. But Alabama gets the number one player in that state to cross the border and come over. I think that's another huge message that Coach Saban and the staff have sent. It is. I believe it or not, I was the number one player in the state of South Carolina in 2014. I can believe that. <laughs> <Easily>. <laughs> he was able to come grab me uh, out of out of the University of South Carolina's backyard, and uh, I think it just goes to show that this program is is well respected. Well respected. Coach Saban is well respected, and people want to come play for Alabama. Uh, they see the championships, they see the success, and they see the success at the next level amongst the guys that formerly played here. So uh, I, I don't think it's too hard for Coach Saban to convince a kid to come to Alabama, especially a DB. Because because uh, he's joked before about he is, he's the grad assistant over there helping with the DBs, and he's done that throughout a large part of his career, and, and certainly this young man will be uh, among those that will be truly hands-on coached by Nick Saban. That's right. Coach Saban loves his DBs. You see yeah. him out at practice, hands-on, and cutting up with guys, and really just coaching, coaching those guys and pouring into them. So that he's going he's gonna to benefit tremendously from having Coach Saban in his ear. Let's, uh, let's go to who, the young man that's next on the list. Jaron Hamilton, uh, the next one that we'll talk about and give us some thoughts initially on this young man as we roll into his video. Yeah, you know, Jaron has a has a track background. You know, he exhibits some really impressive athletic ability. Um, he's a speedy wide receiver. You know, I, I see on tape, he has a quick release and some explosive ability um, aspects to him. Um, you'll see him, uh, you know, frequently climbing that ladder and high point in the football here. Great body control and balance. This guy just refuses to go down. We'd love to see that, especially out of a receiver. I have no doubt that he would love to uh, go downfield and be a physical blocker for his teammates after seeing that type of physicality. Here he is running across the field. Nice yards of the catch. Still the stiff arm. Again, look at him, you know, lowering his shoulder. He almost looks like a running back at times. You know, this guy's a physical guy. And uh, he does a really good job making those contested catches as well, running through traffic, bulldozing, bulldozing over guys. That's special to see out of a wide receiver. It is indeed, and special again when you're able to get a, a top recruit out of not only another state, but as you referenced with yourself, being from Columbia, this is a young man from Gainesville, Florida. You got him from literally where the University of Florida is located. That's right, and a huge get. He's going to be a tremendous help at the wide receiver position. I think he can come in and, and, and make an impact. Again, that, that combination of speed, but also that physicality, you love to see that out of a wide receiver. Um, it, it's just those are the type of intangible things. You can't, you can't coach a guy who's physical and, and, and likes to put his nose in there and really help his teammate. So that's, that's what we see demonstrated by, by Jaron Hamilton. We, again, have been uh, keeping a close eye on what's happening on social media with the signees that have uh, made their way to the University of Alabama. Kinsey Hughes keeping an eye on that. For us. Kinsey, what's the latest? Absolutely, guys. Well, Twitter is buzzing. We're starting off. Connor Talty, 
Look at the flexibility, guys. I know that that's not what we're here to talk about, but that's impressive. We're excited to see this guy, see what he can do and see what he brings to the table. Moving to Dylan Longer again, the QB. Pretty nice graphic here, two sport athlete, ready to see what he can bring to the Crimson Tide. Excited to watch him perform under the lights as well. Then we are moving to the Players Tribune has got something to say about Caleb Downs. There he is on his commitment. And then Jaron Hamilton. Hey guys, he's hitting the Crimson Crane. Nothing wrong, with, nothing wrong with it. We love to see it. And we're looking forward to seeing this guy and all of these guys back in Bryant Denny pretty soon. We look forward to seeing you back in just a few moments, Kenzie. But when we return here on National Signing Day 2023, we'll look back 10 years from now. What did that 2013 class wind up looking like for the University of Alabama? We'll discuss that and have more when we roll on. There's a formula for success. It takes practice, persistence, and an unwavering drive. Together, our aspirations become reality. Every triumph has its origin story. Ours begin right here. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Here, every drop of sweat contains a lifetime of dreams. Every letter, every blade signifies hallowed ground. Championships come down to fingertips. Small steps and giant leaps inspire your future generations. Because here, every little thing just means more. Try it first. Welcome back to National Signing Day 2023. Glad to have you with us on so many Alabama athletics platforms. I'm Chris Stewart along with Christian Miller as we've been checking in with Kenzie Hughes. And we'll do so once again looking back, turning back the clock a little bit, Kenzie, to 2013. Absolutely, man. You know, we're turning back the clock. We've done a great job of covering the future. Now let's talk about the past going to 2013 signing class. Ten years ago, the Crimson Tide turned its attention to National Signing Day 2013, just a few days removed from winning its third national championship under Coach Saban in a 42-14 win over the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Alabama wins! Alabama wins! And it is a Crimson Tide that has rolled on to South Beach, washing up with it. National Championship number 15. The Tide kept that momentum when it came to the recruiting national championship as well, signing the number one ranked class according to the 24-7 sports composite ranking. That year, the Tide signed six five stars, more than any other team in the nation. Five star prospects Reuben Foster, Derek Henry, Jonathan Allen, OJ Howard, Robert Foster, Ashawn Robinson all signed their national letters of intent to come to Tuscaloosa. And the Crimson Tide's 2013 class didn't stop there. 
adding an additional 12 four-star prospects, including Ardarius Stewart and Tim Williams. Oh, and that's not to mention the future NFL stars Cole Mazza, Bradley Bozeman, and two-time Pro Bowler Eddie Jackson. In the four years following the 2013 signing class, the Tide went 51-6, and six, brought home three SEC championships, three college football playoff berths, and the 2015 National Championship. Wow, guys, what an incredible class. Now, Christian, correct me if I'm wrong here, you signed in 2014. So do you have any, like, stories with these guys to talk about? Anything memorable that comes back to you about that special class? You, you better be careful. These guys know where to find you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, though. You're not wrong. I was about to say, you know, I, I, have, I have a plethora of stories. I don't know which ones I should share on there right now. But, man, that truly special class. And uh, all those guys were huge contributors uh, to all our teams here. Uh, especially the ones that won and just seeing those names and just seeing all the names we still see that are having success in the National Football League is so impressive and I'm just so proud uh, that I was able to be a teammate to amongst all those guys that we just saw. Incredibly strange to look back and realize though yeah. that was 10 years ago and so Crazy. much is so much has happened but so much greatness has happened in Tuscaloosa and you guys I know there's pride because you helped lay a foundation. It was laid before you got here, right. but you certainly added to it. That's right, and uh, that's why it's just so special to always be a part of here. I mean, you walk around, you get to see your name in the pavement, and your handprints if you're voted captain, but just being on a national championship team, seeing your hand, I mean, your, your name outside the stadium, it's just so special. And uh, keeping up with those guys, we, we all stay in contact. Yeah. And uh, it's just a special brotherhood amongst all of us that have played here. And I hope these guys signing today understand that, that they are joining a, a truly a special brotherhood that's unlike any other. It is special indeed. Another young man that's special and part of that class, Edric Hill, uh, joining the tie today. Big defensive lineman at 6'3", 290 out of Kansas City, Missouri. Chris, this guy is disruptive, and uh, he's a big interior defensive lineman who offers ample athleticism for his size. You know, he's very strong at the point, at the point of attack, you know, really strong hands, um, stout against the run. Um, he flashes some solid pass rush ability as well. And uh, I really like his hand uses that you get to see out of him right here, coming off the ball, being explosive, getting in the backfield. There's a lot to like about this guy. You see him lined up right there in the three technique, just bullying his way in the backfield. Here he is lined up at nose, again, just bulldozing guys, getting off the block, throwing the quarterback down. Just manhandling guys, Chris. And we see that a lot in high school, but yeah. tell me what you see that's going to allow that to translate to the college game itself. Well, I like his first step. You know, for a bigger guy, he comes off the football nicely, but he really uses his hands well. You know, a lot of guys don't understand hand usage just yet. You know, they like to just use their size to the advantage and push guys around. But if you watch this guy, he does a really good job striking with his hands, using his hands to shed blockers violently, and getting off and making a play. So again, Edric Hill, one of those tremendous signees for the class of 2023. Yonze Pierre. Yeah, that's when we had to check on the pronunciation, but we got it. You better get used to saying his name because we'll be saying it a lot. Yonze Pierre, uh, linebacker who joins this Alabama signing class. You know, Chris, this guy has elite athleticism. He's one of those quick twitch guys, He's very explosive, really good first step. Um, you'll see on tape, he has a high motor. This guy runs hot. You look at him right here, just run to the football, boom, lowering his shoulder, laying the wood on that guy right there. Here he is coming off the edge, flying off the football into the backfield for a sack. Um, he has really nice bend too, natural bend and athleticism. Again, that's, that's hard to teach guys. You see him bending right there, bending at the waist, bending at the ankles, right, running the quarterback all the way down at the, at the other line, at the other sideline. Here he is right here, coming off the football again. That's basically you know, what you played at Bama, right? That's right. That's right. Outside linebacker. And I, I just, I love him. You see him, his speed allows him to make plays from the backside right here. There he is playing in space. Again, physical, physical finish right there. Um, this guy definitely um, will make an impact on the edge. But with his athleticism, he's going to make a huge impact on special teams too. Uh, probably right away. Uh, this guy can just really move. Um, has a great frame uh, at about, you know, 6'4", 225-ish. I'm uh, really excited about this guy. Yonze from Ufala. He is another one of the signees for the Crimson Tide. The next name that is on the list is one that we've been hearing about for quite a while.
tremendous running back out of Georgia, another that the Tide's able to pull across the state line, Justice Haynes. Really excited about this guy. Chris, this guy was extremely productive in high school. You know, he's got that proper size and frame uh, to be a true three down back. You know, he's a physical downhill runner. Here he is getting the ball, getting downhill, running right by everybody. Really nice breakaway speed right there. Taking it all the way to the house. You'll see he has really good burst and uh, he just has great vision as well. Finding those holes, making the right cut. Here he is again, just hitting the hole straight downhill. Effortless. Effortless. You know, he's not dancing around. He's looking to, he finds that hole and he hits it and he trusts it. And that's what you like to see that, that, that that's going to translate to a lot of, a lot of big play opportunities. Taking the ball on the edge right there. Good body control. Running through arm tackles, cutting it back, reversing field all the way for six. Big time prospect, like you said, going into Georgia and getting this guy. Uh, and he was rated as a five star and, and rightfully so. He has all the tools to be a very productive and successful running back in this system. And uh, everybody is very excited about this guy right here. He'd been committed for a while and, and stayed with that commitment, and that was obviously extremely exciting for Alabama fans. So, those are some of the guys of the future. The guys of the present were young men we were talking about in the past not too terribly long ago. Kinsey caught up with a couple of those guys earlier today in Kool-Aid McKinstry and J.C. Latham. Thanks, guys. I am here with J.C. Latham and Kool-Aid McKinstry. So, guys, we're going to start off. Take me back to, like, junior, senior year. Tell me what it was like going through this recruiting process. How special was it? What were some good times? What were some difficult times? Share it with me. Uh, for me, the difficult times were more like when I'm having to ask my mom to travel to different schools that are very far away and different things like that. Totally. And for you? Uh, personally, I would say just being at IMG uh, when COVID hit mm -hmm. kind of like made it a little harder to get around because like the rules and restrictions kind of didn't allow us to really go anywhere for real. So I guess that was kind of unique to our class. Mm -hmm. Made it really difficult. We couldn't um, go see places that we want to see or take official visits to things of that nature. I got you for sure. And let's go ahead and let's talk about signing day real fast. So what made signing day so special for you? I know Kool-Aid, you had kind of an emotional video on signing day and JC, like what was so special about signing day for you guys individually? Uh, it just meant a lot to me because like that was just like a significant point in my life. Like just showing that I'm done with high school, moving on to the next chapter of my life coming to the school that I've always dreamed of coming to, and then just getting ready for college, really. So signing, like putting the pen to the paper, just meant a whole lot. Totally. For you, Kool-Aid? Uh, well, mine was a lot different because um, a lot of people thought I was going to Auburn. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thought I was going to sign Auburn, but I ended up choosing the great Alabama. So kind of shocked the room and yeah. had a lot of people surprised. and. I was very excited to sign Alabama because I know that's where I wanted to go. I got you. I like that. I like that. So going off that, what made you choose Alabama? Like, what stuck out for both of you guys? Uh, for me, I like winning, and I feel like Alabama did a great job of that. And, I mean, like I always say, why not Alabama? It's, exactly. It's hard to find a reason why not to come here. Okay. I like that. Okay. Yeah. For you, Jay-Z? I mean, I like to compete. Yeah. Uh, like, going to IMG, being around, like, the best players in the country, just like made that environment, made me so much better. So when I thought about what school to go to, it kind of like showed itself going to Alabama, going against guys like Will Anderson, Dallas Turner on the day, like Chris Braswell, those guys like that. Just every single day just to make me better. And I those of that you. nature, things of that nature made me just want to be here, excited to be here. Talking about signing day again, right? You're up there, you're sitting at the table, you're in the spot. How relieving is that feeling, right? You're sitting there, everybody's waiting on you to make the call. You make the call. How great is that feeling once you do? I mean, it's a it's a unique feeling. Yeah. Ain't nothing really else like it, especially in high school. I mean, that's like I said, it's kind of the end journey of high school, going to that next chapter. So I mean, ain't nothing really can beat that feeling, knowing you going to the school you dreamed of going to, Alabama, mm -hmm. and that can beat that for me. I got you. And Kool Aid, you coming from Birmingham, coming from the state of Alabama, how special was it for you to be like, you know what? I'm staying home. I'm not going to Auburn. I'm coming to Tuscaloosa, and this is why. How special was it for you to like make that statement? You know. Um, that moment was very special for me because, like I said, a lot of people thought I was going to Auburn and most of my family are Alabama fans. So I'm pretty sure they weren't ready to switch over. 
-hmm. So by me signing with Alabama, it was it made me feel like I did what kind of they wanted me to do, but also what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. kind of ran together. So there's some guys that are in some similar situations that you guys were in just a few years ago. They're signing today, maybe, maybe committing. What's some advice that y'all have for those guys and maybe even your future teammates? Uh, really just embrace the grind. Uh, going into high school, you have to earn your stripes, earn your right. So uh, it's the same thing coming into college. You're going to have to do it all over again. So just embrace the journey and the grind that comes with it. Totally. Go away. Um, like I, I would say the same kind of thing. It's a new start, um, like JC said. So be ready to come in and work and re-identify who you are. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. We're looking forward to seeing y'all in the Sugar Bowl. All Definitely. right. Back to y'all. Thank you, Kenzie. Thanks also to Kool-Aid and JC. When we come back, yeah, we're talking about the future, but the immediate future for the Crimson Tide is a trip to New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl. We'll discuss that and more when National Signing Day 2023 rolls on. There's a formula for success. It takes practice, persistence, and an unwavering drive. Together, our aspirations become reality. Every triumph has its origin story. Ours begin right here. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Every drop of sweat contains a lifetime of dreams. Every letter, every blade signifies hallowed ground. Championships come down to fingertips. Small steps and giant leaps inspire future generations. Because here, every little thing just means more. at first. Yeah. Great to have you with us again for National Signing Day 2023. Our program brought to you, obviously, by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama. I'm Chris Stewart alongside Christian Miller, and this is an exciting time because, yeah, it's National Signing Day. Bama's got the number one class. Oh, by the way, the Sugar Bowl is coming up, and that still means an awful lot to Alabama people. It does. You know, a bowl game is very special. I have a lot of great memories of bowl games, and the Sugar Bowl is a tremendous bowl, and uh, it's, a big, it's a big matchup facing the Big 12 champions, and in Kansas State, you know, they have a really good uh, running back in Deuce Vaughn, who's rushed for over 1,400 yards, and good quarterbacks, two good quarterbacks. So it's going to be a good matchup for the Crimson Tide. You got the thumbnail on Kansas State from Christian Miller. Now we'll get a little more in the weeds on them as we welcome in Christopher England. Number five, Alabama, will take on number nine, Kansas State, in the All-State Sugar Bowl. The Crimson Tide have played 1,000 330 games all time, but none of those have ever been against the Wildcats. This will be Alabama and Coach Saban's first ever meeting against Kansas State. Alabama's played more bowl games in the Sugar Bowl than any other bowl. This will be the Tide's 17th Sugar Bowl appearance, eight more than their nine Cotton Bowl appearances. Alabama has been to an unmatchable 75 bowl games, 16 more than second place Georgia's 59 bowl appearances. 
The Crimson Tide also have more bowl victories than any other program with 44. Alabama's last appearance in the Sugar Bowl was a big one. In the 2017 season, the Tide rolled over number one Clemson 24-6 on the way to their 17th national championship. The Wildcats have won four straight, including the Big 12 championship with a win over college football playoff participant TCU. Tied at 28 in that overtime period, TCU went for it on fourth and one from the one yard line, but the Wildcats defense stood tall. All the Wildcats had to do then was kick a short field goal for the win, and the Wildcats' Ty Zintner drilled it through the uprights for the win in the Big 12 championship. The Wildcats defeated the third-ranked Horned Frogs 31-28 in overtime. Kansas State has three top 10 wins on the season, the most in school history. Along with defeating number three TCU in the Big 12 championship game, Kansas State defeated then number six Oklahoma 31-24 in Norman, and then dominated number nine Oklahoma State 48 to nothing. This is a good, old-fashioned, well-coached, disciplined, tough, good football team. And they could make an argument that, you know, since they beat one of the teams that are in the playoffs, maybe they should be in the playoffs. So I think this is a really good team. Leading Kansas State in those four consecutive wins is quarterback Will Howard. Howard stepped in against Baylor when Adrian Martinez went down with a lower leg injury. Over those four wins, Howard has thrown 15 touchdowns to just two interceptions. Despite the efficient play of Martinez and Howard this season, the Wildcats aren't afraid to run. Kansas State leads the Big 12 with 530 rush attempts on the season, compared to just 354 pass attempts. All-American Deuce Vaughn leads the Wildcats in the Big 12 in rush attempts with 271 on the season and is third in the Big 12, averaging over 109 yards per game. Vaughn is a threat to catch the ball out of the backfield as well as he is second on the team in receptions with 42 and 13th in the nation in all-purpose yards at over 138 per game. Kansas State leads the Big 12 in scoring defense, allowing less than three touchdowns a game at 20.8 points per contest. One advantage for the Wildcats is turnover margin. Kansas State is fifth in the nation at plus 14. Wildcats defense has recorded 16 interceptions on the season, along with eight fumble recoveries. One huge advantage for the Crimson Tide is there were no opt-outs. The Crimson Tide had the best offensive and defensive player in the nation ready to suit up for the Sugar Bowl. Two of the top players projected in next year's NFL draft both wanted to play one more time this season for the Crimson Tide. For me, um, you know, it was easy. I just wanted to, um, you know, it's another opportunity to go out there and play with play with my brothers. So um, again, I'm, I'm grateful for the chance we have, for the opportunity we all have, um, individuals and as a team. Um, you know, this is a huge opportunity. Um, this is a, a big game to play against a really, really good team. Um, and, um, you know, we, we have a lot that, that we want to prove to ourselves. There's a lot that we want to accomplish um, as a team. And um, I'm, I'm just happy to get another chance to play with my guys. For me, it was all just about the leadership and being here for the team. And, you know, I've been preaching so much over these last two years um, about, you know, how to do things the right way, the standard around here, and um, how to uplift the standard and how to uphold the standard. And, you know, it just wouldn't be right for me just to walk out on my teammates. And, um, you know, I think that's a big reason why I decided to play in this game and be with those guys. Along with Bryce and Will, several other players are projected to go early in next year's NFL draft, and they all chose to play in the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> This game is shaping up to be one of the best bowl games of the season. Just like the Crimson Tide, the Wildcats aren't expecting any opt-outs either. So it'll be the fifth-ranked Crimson Tide against the Big 12 champion Kansas State Wildcats in the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans on New Year's Eve. It'll be an early morning in the Big Easy. The action is set to kick off at 11 a.m. on ESPN. Christopher, thank you so very much. It, it was fun to watch some of those highlights with Christian, who played in two Sugar Bowls. But some of those from the 70s and 80s, you, you had no recollection of that stuff. I was a little boy, was watching that on television. Those were my first memories, some of my first memories of watching the Tide and, and seeing them. But regardless of when your generation is, you know New Orleans and Alabama is a special combination. It really is. A lot of great memories from uh, me playing there. And 
Uh, specifically, I think back to the 2017 season, and it was the 2018 Sugar Bowl where we faced Clemson. We saw some clips there, but um, I was able to I recorded a half sack, and I had faced uh, probably 10 games of, uh, that I missed where I was rehabbing uh, my biceps injury, and that was uh, my second game back uh, after the Auburn game, and uh, I was able to get in on a sack. So that one meant a lot to me, but so many other memories uh, being in New Orleans for a really good bowl game in the Sugar Bowl. Great, great venue, and it should be a great matchup between the Tide and the Wildcats. All right, in the future, young men such as Malik Benson hope that they'll play in a Sugar Bowl and a college football playoff or whatever they wind up calling it once we expand here in just a few years. But let's learn a little bit more about this young man out of Lansing, Kansas, 6'1", 185. He comes to the University of Alabama by way of one of the top junior college programs in America in Hutchinson. Chris, this guy is a dynamic play, uh, playmaker, has really good speed. You know, he offers that deep threat ability. You know, you watch him in his routes, very solid route runner, does a really good job getting in and out of his breaks. Um, I really like his body control, his spatial awareness. You see him often making these acrobatic catches. Um, this guy can offer immediate help. You know, you mentioned he's coming from um, a prominent junior, junior college, so an older guy with, with some experience. And uh, I think this is one of those instant impact type of players right here. You see him lined up at the bottom of the screen. About 1,200 yards in high school, 11 TDs, and again, Bama, Georgia, LSU, Oregon, Tennessee all wanted him, and many others, of course, but those were the finalists, and uh, one of the reasons why this is the top-rated class in the country. That's right. Again, huge playmaker at a, at a position of need. I think he comes in here, offers that deep threat ability, able to get in and out of his routes because he's very fluid, and uh, I, I'm very excited about what he can offer to the program. You know, so many players we talk about now coming out of the transfer portal uh, from other Division I programs, great high school programs. Don't see as many junior college kids, but we got another one in Justin Jefferson, Pearl River Community College. For this linebacker, it's 215, a 6'1 young man who is expected to be really good out of Memphis. Chris, this guy has uh, immense talent. You know, he's a lean linebacker. You know, he's not the, the thickest guy in the world, but you watch him. Now, he's physical. Don't let his weight fool you. You see him coming down the hill right there, physically attacking that guard, making the play. Here he is right there, stepping up in the hole, slamming the player right here. I mean, this guy uh, plays with a lot, of, a lot of intensity. He plays with that bully mentality. He's very effective, as you see, coming on blitzes, the way he shoots the gap and, and goes and, and takes the quarterback out. Here he is shooting the gap again. Boom. This guy is looking to lay the wood on his opponents. You know, he's got really good change of direction, can play sideline to sideline. Um, but again, the thing I love about him is he's looking to make the ball carrier pay when he goes to make a tackle. And here he is dropping in coverage, putting his foot in the ground, boom, making another solid tackle. Uh, I think he's going to benefit tremendously from getting the strength program, adding on, you know, 10 to 15 pounds, maybe getting a little more mass on him. But this guy is electric and he is a physical player. Justin Jefferson, you see the announcement there via the Alabama Twitter feed, which was very, very busy today. Also a young man that's expected to be very busy as he becomes part of the Alabama family, Hunter Osborne. He's from Trustful, played at Hewitt Trustful High School, 6'4", 260, and expected to be a great addition along the defensive front. Chris, this guy is uh, he's going to project as a defensive lineman in our defense. Right now he's around the 260-pound range, but I expect him to put a little bit more weight on and slide down in the interior. See him right here. He's lined up on the edge. That shows that he at least has the athletic ability right there. So he's going to be a threat um, at the interior position when he, when he slides down in our system. Um, you know, he's going to provide that, that athleticism from inside, being able to rush inside out and uh, give you some great pass rush. Again, here he is lined up on the edge again, just bullying guys. Does a good job using his hands, getting off blocks, making plays. Um, really excited about the athleticism that we've been able to uh, acquire in this class. Uh, these guys on this front seven are talented and they can move really well. There are occasions where sometimes you, you wonder if a guy is ready to compete night in and night out because what he may have faced in high school it is not as challenging as it may be somewhere else. Well, that young man basically played in the SEC West of high school football. It's Class 7A Region 3 
playing at Hewitt Trustful. He's battle tested. He'll be ready when he gets to Tuscaloosa. That's right, Chris. And that's all you can ask. He's a guy with some experience that's ready to come in and work. Um, you know, he played against the best of the best, and he's going to continue to play against the best of the best, especially in practice once he gets on campus, going against his teammates who are also immensely talented. Not a shock for a lot of people that this young man would stay home, stay in Tuscaloosa, comes from a tremendous family. Wilkin Formby played at Northridge High School, uh, a big one, 6'7", 295 pounds. Doesn't have far to go from Northridge to the University of Alabama campus, but another great pickup for Coach Saban and the staff. A big one. You described it perfect, and that describes this offensive line uh, class, Chris. 6'7", 300 pounds. Again, another tall, lengthy offensive lineman. You know, he even has a little bit more of a leaner frame that's capable of adding additional mass, surprisingly. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. You know, again, another guy that's tall, but really nice knee bend. You can see him driving the guy off the football right there, blocking to the whistle. You love seeing that mean streak out of your offensive lineman. And again, just that common theme right here with this offensive line class. These guys are big, beefy guys. They get good push on the offensive line. You see them climbing to the next level right here, just bullying guys. <laughs> yeah, it came down to Alabama, Auburn, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, and Tennessee as his final choices. And thankfully, it will be the University of Alabama that he opts to play for next season. Will conform me again another Offensive lineman putting his name on the dotted line as he will further his education and his playing career in Tuscaloosa, his hometown. Kenzie Hughes has been doing a great job of keeping us updated as what's happening with uh, the social media side of things, and we'll get another update from her now. Kenzie? Hey, Chris, thank you so much. So, looking at it, Justice Haynes. He is beyond thankful and grateful, as we are as well, for him to join us here at Alabama. So, super excited about this guy. And Malik Benson, looking forward to calling T-Town home. We're looking forward to having you, Malik. Look at him there with Coach Saban at his high school visit. Love to see it. Love to see Coach Saban in there with those guys. Really, really creating a good environment, a good relationship with his future players. Next, the hometown guy, Wilkin Formby. Looking forward to watching this guy play. Comes from a great family here in T-Town, and uh, he's just going to be one of those guys who's really, really excited to rep the script A, and that's something that you just absolutely love. So a lot of great things expected from these guys, such as about five years ago, we'll take a little rewind to the 2018 signing class. Some great things happened from those guys as well. Less than a month after Tua Tungavailoa found Devontae Smith in overtime to win the 2018 College Football Playoff National Championship. Fires to the end zone, touchdown! Alabama wins! The Crimson Tide will not be denied. The Crimson Tide celebrated yet another successful National Signing Day. The 2018 signing class was another successful one for Coach Shaven and his staff, adding 15 four- or five-star signings. The class was highlighted by plenty of future college and NFL stars, including Patrick Sertan, Jalen Waddell, Josh Job, Jalen Armour Davis, Emil Echior, Cam Latu, Xavier Williams, Christian Barmore, Slade Bolden, and Jalen Moody. The four years following the 2018 class's signing would be, again, a huge success, with the Tide going 51-5 and over those four seasons, bringing three SEC championships back to Tuscaloosa, three more college football playoff appearances, and, of course, following the 2020 season, the 2021 College Football Playoff National Championship in a 52-24 to win over Ohio State, a game which saw 2018 signee Christian Barmore claim the defensive MVP. A star-studded 2018 signing class. And, okay, Christian, I'm not trying to age you, my man, but I think these guys were freshmen, right, when you were a senior? So any, uh, careful asking this one, but any special stories from these guys' freshman year that stick out to you? You know, you're right. Those guys were freshmen when I was a senior, and uh, it's just amazing to see the development uh, that all of those guys had. You know, I look at guys like Cam Latu. He was in the linebacker room with me um, for a period of time before transitioning to tight end. And uh, I always like to, you know, take him under my wing. And even guys like Christian Barmore, a uh, guy who came in and a little bit of a knucklehead his first couple of years, but to see him grow up and, and the success that he's having with the New England Patriots, I'm, I'm just so proud of him. And uh, it's just it's so special to see these guys um, having the success that, that they're having. 
She don't want to age you. How do you think I feel over here? <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's roll to a break when we come back. Jordan Ar uh, Renault, excuse me, is who we will learn more about. Stay with us here on National Signing Day 2023. At first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to a sold out Colvin Coliseum in Tuscaloosa. Players play, tough players win championships. If we're blue collar basketball, we're winning this game. Okay, if you play harder than them, you win the game. Roll, Tom, roll is exactly doing that. It's hard to hear yourself in here. There's a formula for success. It takes practice, persistence, and an unwavering drive. Together, our aspirations become reality. Every triumph has its origin story. Ours begin right here. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. So we've got about 27 names on this board. We've gone through about 15, still a dozen to go. How are we feeling, guys? Chris, Christopher, where are we at, guys? Christian, come on. I, uh, I feel pretty good because those names are all in. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. We know who they are. We know who's going to be coaching them. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good starting point right there. That's right, and I feel great as well. Again, and, and Coach Saban mentioned it, high character guys. I love hearing that because that's, that's half the battle right there. So really excited. All right, let's, uh, let's learn about another one of those young men now. Jordan Renault. He's from Tyler, Texas. Played at Tyler Legacy High School, 6'4", 245. And again, that frame will grow as he becomes part of Alabama's future defensive line. Yes, right, Chris. You know, heavy handed guy and uh, at 6'4, 245. Generally, we'll project him as, as a jack linebacker in, in, this, in this scheme. Um, but I feel like he could grow and almost transition to more of a defensive end in this role. You see him with a really nice long arm right there, punishing the quarterback when he gets to him. Really strong at the point of attack, stout against the run. You see him right here again, just really putting his nose in there, trying to make a play plays with a lot of grit and again I think he'll provide some versatility on the defensive line given that he has experience playing on the edge but could possibly grow into a bigger framed guy playing more of a you know three technique four eye technique in this uh, defense here there he is bull rushing right there getting the hands off making a play based off effort right there love to see that you know couple of those you saw yeah he he clogs things up and then goes and chases right and again I you can speak to that far better than I but a guy who didn't give up on a play just on his first getting his first job done that's right and it's so important got to have those guys got to have high effort guys in your system all right Jaleel Hurley is another guy who uh, is expected to be really good on the defensive side of things played at Florence High School in the northern part of the state ton of people wanted him consensus four star and at 62170 easy to understand why 
Yeah, a tremendous athlete. You know, this guy is lined up at cornerback. He's lined up at safety, wide receiver, returner. One of those uh, do-it-all type of players. And uh, he's got great length for a cornerback. You see him right here, returning the ball, running by everybody. Obviously a great athlete with some really good speed. Um, but he just shows the, the ability in terms of playing the cornerback position, getting out in and out of his breaks fluidly. Really nice change of direction right there, making a physical tackle. So important for a guy, especially as a cornerback. Those guys aren't known to be physical tacklers. <laughs> so anytime you have a guy that, that that's an added bonus, you love to see that out of a guy right there, tracking the football, making an interception from the tip. Really nice return right there, weaving in and out of guys. He's just a playmaker. He's a ball hawk. He's always around the football. He's lined up at wide receiver right here. Um, just a phenomenal athlete that can do uh, a number of things for you and provide so much value to your team. And clearly versatile that they would use him on offense as they do right there to pick up some nice yardage. So again, Jaleel Hurley, part of this class of 2023. Rock McEldry, we're not even going to worry about the, the first name. He likes to go by Rock and for announcers like myself with tougher names, we really appreciate the more simple one that we get to go by. <laughs> but Rock is a good one that people are going to learn a lot about over the years. Chris, I don't know if they call him Rock because he's built like a big rock, but this is a big, big. guy. 6'3", 340-ish, big physical offensive lineman. Now, this guy plays with a mean streak. You watch him play, he plays nasty. He's looking to, to take guys out and he's looking to move guys. You see him right here blocking all the physical, you know, putting the guy on his back and he's standing up and he's proud of it. You know, this guy is, is, is looking to make somebody pay. You see him getting out there on the screen, running, moving really well for his size. You know, I, I like that he plays with really good leverage. Uh, he sees, keeps his pads low, eyes under eyes, and he's really strong at the point of attack. This guy is going to be projected to be a guard, an interior offensive lineman. He's really going to help get really good push, and those guys are critical to having an effective run game. So a really big pickup right here as you watch Rock and Geldery, just a, a talented offensive lineman, very strong and very physical. Auburn, Florida State, Georgia, Tennessee were among those that wanted him, but again, another of the 27 that opted to sign with the University of Alabama. Miles McVay, we talked about defensive line, defensive back, linebacker, but Miles McVay, an offensive lineman at 6'6", 358 out of East St. Louis, Illinois. It's expected to be a big addition at 6'6", 358. He's going to be a big addition, but a big time performer as well for the Tide. Chris, it might need to be illegal to have this many offensive linemen this size. Not I, if they come to our place, it's not. <laughs> I feel people people are going to be scared to play against guys like this. Again, 6'6", 358. I mean, it's not even fair the type of size that we're bringing in the program. I mean, this guy, not to mention to be that size, he moves so well. He demonstrates some very solid footwork and fluid movement for his size. Really like seeing that from him and he's going to do a really good job in this weight program. I could see him potentially being a Jaheim Otis-like guy in terms of his transformation, shedding some of that extra weight and really getting to a, a physically dominant state. Well, he saw some quickness from him. There was a, a play there where he took on two blockers, one at one point, one at another. Mm -hmm. And he may not have a ton of foot speed, but quickness that allowed him to execute that. That's right, and, it's in, and for a guy weighing almost 300, you see him, Whew. man, just mauling guys. To weigh that much and to be able to move like that, that is rare. That is elite, and you can't coach those things, Chris. You just can't coach it. 6'6", 358, that is indeed tough to coach. <laughs> Caden Proctor, this is a young man who, when it came out that he was committing to Alabama, I believe, earlier in the week, created a lot of buzz. He had been the state of Iowa's top-ranked prospect a five-star according to everyone this big offensive tackle decided you know what I'm gonna go play with the best and he'll come to the University of Alabama you said it you know another guy out of Iowa reminds me of my teammate from my class Ross Pierce Baker who made the decision to come down to the University of Alabama this guy is a big physical offensive lineman same theme we've seen from the other guys but this guy truly has again that mean streak that bully mentality that tenacity and he has elite athleticism for his size as well. You know, he was ranked as the number one offensive tackle for a reason. This guy is advanced. You watch his techniques. He does a lot of things that you see from a lot of older guys. You see him using the, the snatch and, and slap technique, swatting guys' hands off of him. You 
see him right here just bullying guys, getting in their faces, blocking them to the whistle, driving them out of bounds. I mean, this, this guy is, is your prototypical offensive tackle. I feel that he can definitely come in and have a great shot at competing for that offensive tackle position that will, will be open with uh, Tyler Steen leaving. Um, this guy reminds me almost of a, of a Jedrick Wills. Yeah. Uh, they play a lot alike, and I was a guy I played with, and he reminds me a lot of him. He's obviously a, a ton of talent and another great pickup, a guy who's leaving uh, a chance to play for his home state team, which is a solid program, but wanted to come play for the best, and he's coming to Tuscaloosa, which, again, speaks volumes to the reach of the Crimson Tide. It does. I mean, you got guys from the West Coast, up north, Midwest, and it just shows, you know, the, the prominence of this program. And kids want to come compete. They want to win championships. They want a chance to play at the next level. And there's no other better place to do it than the University of Alabama. No, and that's why we see all this stuff in the Twitterverse, and it's all about the gram. Yeah. And for us, that means it's all about Kenzie Hughes. Kenzie, what are you seeing out there? The Twitter gram, the ver I like that. I don't know what we did there, but I like that. I like the new vocabulary for you, Thank Chris. You. But we got Jaleel Hurley keeping it exciting on Twitter. He's a thousand percent committed. I don't even think there's an emoji for that, right? But we're excited to have him in Bryant Denny Stadium. And look at this, The Rock at his home visit with Coach Saban. We are so excited to see the family atmosphere that Coach Saban decides to keep with these recruits and Miles McVeigh, a state champ and a Bama commit. Not too bad of a combination there, guys. That's, that seems like some wins all around, right? And there he is again with Coach Saban and the state championship trophy. Again, two things that as a, a senior football player in high school, that's not a bad combination of things to have with you. And then wrapping it up with Caden Proctor, a home away from home as you see him on the Walk of Champions. He's looking to be a champion. What do you guys think about that, Chris? No, I, I think he is indeed. But again, you got to get, got to give me my props. I didn't say the Twitter gram, Twitter verse, and about the gram. Did I get that right? Sounds good to me. Sounds good to you. I should have gone with the youngster <laughs> and, and found out more. When we come back, we're going to hear about more of these youngsters that have signed today with the Crimson Tide. It's coming up next. Glad you're with us for National Signing Day 2023. There's a formula for success. It takes practice, persistence, and an unwavering drive. Together, our aspirations become reality. Every triumph has its origin story. Ours begin right here. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Here, every drop of sweat contains a lifetime of dreams. Every letter, every blade signifies hallowed ground. Championships come down to fingertips. Small steps and giant leaps inspire your future generations. Because here, every little thing just means more. Try it first.
Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here on National Signing Day 2023. I'm trying to remind myself that we're still a week away from the calendar actually flipping, but it is the signing class for 2023. Chris Stewart alongside Christian Miller, Kenzie Hughes, joining us once again in just a moment. There's a lot to unpack with all of this, but the great news is if you're an Alabama fan, it's all great news. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you can't sum it up any better than that. You know, so much talent in this class, high character guys in this class, guys that are ready and, and able to come in and work and compete and hopefully uh, work towards adding another championship to the legacy here at Alabama. Let's uh, keep rolling along and talking about these young men. Next on the list, Tony Mitchell, again, another tremendously talented guy from within the state of Alabama, played at one of the most successful high school programs nationally. We're talking about Thompson right there in Alabaster in Shelby County, 6'2", 180, a DB who, uh, again, will have a, a great opportunity to go from being really, really good, in fact, great at the high school level, to great potentially at the college level as well. Sure, and one of those things that's going to help him is that length, you know, 6'2 guy. That's great length for a cornerback, and uh, he's lengthy. He can play several different positions. He can line up at outside corner. He's athletic enough to line up in the slot, and uh, I really like what I saw from him in, in his tackling ability. You know, he doesn't shy away from contact. You'll see him coming up, driving on the football, making nice, clean tackles, physical tackles. You know, he, he, he does a good job always, you know, being around the football, you know, being a ball hawk. And uh, I just really like the versatility that we've seen from a lot of these guys. Really nice pass deflection right there, timing it well, getting the swat on the football. Um, just always around the football. And this guy definitely played against some good talent as well. You talk about the physicality. Is that what can often separate whether you're a corner or a safety, in addition to maybe just a millisecond in terms of speed? It can. You know, the safety position, you, you, you have to, you know, you're expected to come down in the box and add more run support. You're expected to come up and make those tackles um, a lot more often than a cornerback. However, you do need to be able to uh, make tackles at the cornerback position and just provide support at the edge. However, safety, you definitely see a lot more uh, physicality. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get hit by a corner and I'm going to be challenged to a foot race by safety because I took <laughs> shots indirectly at both of them. Not intended, I promise you. Cole Adams, a wide out next on our list. He's out of Owasa, Oklahoma, 5'10", 180, a very versatile playmaker in this class. Versatile indeed. You know, he doubles as a returner. Um, you see him make a lot of plays as a returner. Uh, that's going to be a huge area of value for this guy. And, and Cole Adams, here he is right here. Blazing fast. I think this guy posted a 10.65 in the 100 meter dash, if I'm not mistaken, which is extremely fast. So he's a very gifted athlete. Um, he's a dynamic playmaker, you know, very elusive, very evasive. Um, I'm really excited about this guy. Probably more of a slot receiver in terms of uh, his offensive position, but I think he's going to offer a lot of value as a, as a returner as well. And uh, he's also a very gritty guy. This guy is not afraid to block. He's, he's a willing blocker. You'll see him uh, blocking for his teammates downfield, which is always good to see. But again, most notably, his blazing speed, hard to bring down. Really excited about Cole Adams. Another guy again who's in the neighborhood of a prominent program an in-state kid there in Oklahoma but opted to come to play for the Crimson Tide pick Bam over Arkansas LSU and Tennessee among others so uh, Cole Adams another tremendous addition for the Crimson Tide Richard Young boy the running back class is a very good one he's out of Lehigh Acres Florida 5'11", 200, and this young man, explosive power, speed, and finesse. That's why he's one of the elite rushers in the country. He's got it all, Chris. You mentioned it. He's explosive. He has tremendous burst. This guy hits the hold hard and fast. Uh, that perfect blend, like you mentioned, of that physicality, but also the shiftiness and elusiveness. I mean, you see this guy just running right by folks. They running right through arm tackles. This guy is going to be a playmaker, if I can tell you that. Ran right out of the camera there. That's at right. The, uh, at the very <laughs> end. Probably hit his head on the goalpost hey. he was running so fast. Probably did. Man, just running through arm tackles, running guys over, people diving at his legs. He's high-stepping. He is so hard to bring down, and I love to see that. He also has the ability to catch the football out of the backfield. 
So between him and Justice Haynes, these men, so much talent at the running back position. These guys are do-it-all type of guys, and I think they're going to be a beautiful one-two punch combo here at Alabama. So I'm really excited about Richard Young as well. Boy, he, he looks to run pretty physical for 5'11", 200 pounds. Not that small by any stretch, but he's got some power in addition to the speed. You can see that, obviously. He does, indeed. Alabama over Georgia, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Ohio State, and Oregon. Those were his finalists. All right, let's go back to another DB. Brayson Hubbard, 6'2", 190. He's a Mississippi native out of Ocean Springs. Tell us about this young man who is projected, played a number of positions, but projected as a DB in college. Yeah, Chris, so he's a talented dual threat quarterback over in Mississippi, uh, but he's likely going to see the transition to safety um, in, in the defense here. Um, he's got really good size and length for a safety at 6'2", um, but I think he honestly could, could, could uh, provide a lot of talent as well um, at the safety position when he gets here. I mean, you watch him right here. These are his quarterback highlights, but man, he's got an arm on him, so you know you got a backup quarterback as well if you need one. You know, it's interesting to see, going back, different time, different era, completely understand, but so many kids used to play quarterback in high school. They come to somewhere like Alabama, and they may go immediately to DB. That doesn't happen a ton. It speaks volumes about him understanding what his real free, uh, future in the game may be, that he's willing to walk away from that glamour position at quarterback and go over and play in the secondary. That's right. Those are two totally different positions. And if he's choosing to play on the defensive side of the ball, that means this guy likes contact and he likes to be physical. We just saw him high point of football at the safety position second ago. Really nice job. Another one right there. Again, that's showing that length, that 6'2 frame, that he can go up and get the football. And a lot, of, a lot of learning probably still, because I'm going to guess, just to guess, he didn't play every down in the secondary. Probably when you do, when you see a guy play quarterback and secondary, then, then it's key plays, third down situations, maybe passing downs, that he does that. Really not certain myself, but again, that uh, a young man who everybody's excited to have coming to the University of Alabama. A lot of guys want to play the position in Tuscaloosa. And a guy who's going to be at be given every opportunity is out of Zachary, Louisiana. Eli Holstein, 6'4", 222, top quarterback prospect in the 2023 cycle. Big statured guy, Chris. And he's a great athlete with a, that big frame, 6'4". Uh, man, this guy has a really strong arm, and he throws with some, zero, some serious zip and accuracy as well. See him dropping back right here, letting it go deep. I mean, that, that, that's some serious airtime under that football. So this guy has no problem driving the football down the field. Also see him throw some nice accurate passes on his tape as well. Here he is dropping back again, stepping up in the pocket, showing off his athleticism. This guy has some really good speed right there to escape the pocket, being able to make plays with his legs. I was interested in seeing this because when he's listed as a pocket passer, it doesn't always mean that he's going to be very mobile, but we've seen already of that play in the previous one, the guy can move a little bit back there. I agree. I think he's a borderline dual threat quarterback with his capabilities. Now, they probably list him as a pocket passer because he'd rather sit back in the pocket, keep his eyes downfield, and look for those throws, which is not a problem. You'd like to see that out of a quarterback, but the fact that he can get it done with his legs when he needs to is really important. How much does the height play into that, being 6'4", where he can maybe see over things a little bit longer, doesn't have to get to the edge as others may need to. It's going to play a, a huge factor in this offense, Chris, because these linemen we've got, these guys are yeah. averaging 6'6 six, six plus. For, so. Forget the D-line. you got to see over your own O-line That's right. in order for that to be the case. So Eli Holstein uh, added to the mix as well. Quay Rousseau is a linebacker and a very, very talented one as well. Man, this guy is fun to watch. And uh, it, again, he, he almost reminds me of that Rashawn uh, Evans type player where in high school, you know, he played on the edge, but he also can play it inside as well. Um, extreme versatility with him, but he is a quick twitch explosive athlete um, that excels in both run support and pass rush. You see him right here lined up at inside linebacker blitzing completely <laughs> derails the quarterback right there. Again, lined up stacked back as a linebacker drop and there he is tracking the quarterback if you see that pursuit and that closing speed that's special that's very rare they've got to be able to close and cover ground like that as a linebacker that's phenomenal again look at him just running sideline to sideline making the tackle right there 
This guy is special, and he can play a number of positions. He can play on the edge, at outside linebacker. You can stack him back as an inside linebacker. Again, it reminds me a lot of, of Rashawn Evans. Here he is coming off the edge right here, playing great in space, good change of direction, slamming the guy down at the end of the play. Um, just his closing speed, his versatility, his pursuit, his physicality, this guy has it all, and he's going to be a high-impact player. Played at Carver High School in Montgomery, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, all wanted him. Everybody did, but he's chosen the University of Alabama. And the last name on the list is his teammate at Carver High School. It's James Smith, big defensive lineman at 6'3", 310 pounds. Very disruptive, Chris. This guy has elite athleticism for a 300-pounder. Um, he flies off the ball. It's like he's being shot out of a cannon, as, as we call it, on the defensive line. Um, he's also very versatile. Um, for a 300-pounder, this guy lines up at the edge position. That's unheard of, but this guy can do it because of his phenomenal athleticism. Here he is right there making a play off the edge. Again, line up in a five technique, doing a good job getting inside, getting skinny, as we call it, <laughs> getting through the gaps, getting a sack, lined up on the edge again in the run game, making it happen. You know, he's going to slide down inside in college. He's going to be um, a defensive tackle here. But what he brings to the table is elite athleticism and, and also great strength and just playmaking ability. This guy is a big physical, nasty type of guy, really athletic, fires off the ball. He has very, very high potential, and he's going to be a huge factor on that defensive line. Excited to see what James Smith and the other 26 signees for the Alabama signing class of 2023 are going to do in their careers. We've been seeing all the names on the big board. Kenzie Hughes, thanks so much. Great job of working the big board for us near that Alabama locker room and uh, helping us introduce these young men to the Alabama fan base. Hey guys, well, thank you so much. We've got 27 great guys that have signed the dotted line today. We're looking forward to seeing them and I've really enjoyed being here in my own little tunnel back here. I've liked it. Thank you guys. Glad you have. Enjoyed having you. Christian, final thoughts on this class and what we've seen today. Special day. I feel like, you know, they, they, they hit it right on the head. You know, they, they got um, some beef and, and physicality up front on the offensive line. They got some athleticism and physicality as well on the defensive line. You got playmakers on both sides of the ball, some ball hawks in the secondary, some really good quarterbacks. Um, overall, just a very talented and balanced class. I'm really excited about these guys. But most importantly, Coach Saban said it, he alluded to the character of these guys. They have the right mindset, so to speak, to come in, get to work, and to buy into the process and the principles of the val and the values of the organization, as, he's, as he says so often. So I'm really looking forward to keeping up with these guys. I wish them nothing but success and uh, really excited about their futures. Fun to work with you, partner. Thanks Always. so much, Thanks. Christian Miller for Kinsey Hughes, for Alex Siver, our producer, and also Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama, our partner in bringing you Signing Day 2023. I'm Chris Stewart. Thank you for joining us. Roll Tide, everybody.